What's going on guys? Welcome back to Season 7 of my NHL 24 Salt Lake City Dragons Expansion Mode Series. As always guys, thank you so much for supporting the last episode. If you also leave a thumbs up in this one as well, I'd really appreciate it. We're currently 4-3 and three in the preseason. Dreamer, they're actually leading score 10 points in 7 games. If you guys missed the last episode, nothing really to worry about. The Devils there won the Cup. We're still looking for our first one. Hopefully this is the year. I feel like the team, I think I say this every time, but the team is stacked. I think eventually we gotta get lucky in these playoffs. So. First line, you can see we got Dreber, Reinhardt, and Ranton getting a plus five. Ranton is back to being a 96. He had dropped to a 95. Chinikov there. We actually traded Buchnevich for playing with Stan Coven and Catman on the second line. Also getting a plus five. You then have the captain and Taylor Hall playing with Hedstrom to Landria. Hedstrom here is the rookie. Already 85 overall, two way forward. Kind of does it all. So he's playing some power plays, playing some PK for us. Fourth line, you got Hooten in there, make his NHL debut, playing with McGrordy, as well as Porter Martone, who is giving me an NHL rookie. Kind of cool as well, guys. A couple nights ago, I actually got to see him play against the Spitfires, scored a goal right in front of me and Thrash. Um, if you guys, you know, pause it right there, you can see me. I like the fact he wears number 94. That's my birth year, but definitely don't like him scoring on my spits. Defensively here, we got Rensky and Byram on the top pair, getting a plus two. Byram's got 99 passing, somehow has no passing X factors. So I'm hoping, you know, he'll produce more for us this season. Last year, only had 38 points. That uh, looks like it's a career high, 67, a couple years ago with the Avs. You got Uyghur then, Glebov on the second pairing, get a plus five. It's an awesome shutdown pair. Schaefer, Levshinov, even on the bottom, I think, is very solid. Goal tight, we still got Knight there's 86. Saarinen's now backing him up. You look at the power play, I mean, that first unit is absolutely stacked. Even the second unit here, I think, is very solid. Uh, four mans, obviously, are always going to be pretty good. PK-wise, I think Hedstrom, really going to boost that up. Um, I think, honestly, we don't even have any negative chemistry to the third unit, which isn't going to be out there too often. So should be good in terms of kind of all facets of our game. Now, AHL team, they really want to call. They're looking for another. You got Preston there in the middle, 80 overall. You got to make it snappy X Factor. Play with Lysel, who we picked up. Justin Poirier there can make the NHL team pretty soon. Sunkfist, solid bomb six. We didn't quite make the NHL team. I look at the rest of the team. Like, they're pretty much all high 70s. Same goes for the defense there. And then goaltending wise we actually have Austin Ball starting, 82 overall. I'm a little bit worried by his athletic stats, three stars. I think I mentioned that before, but we'll see how he does this season in the A. In terms of the captain here, guys, I think it's pretty much the same as before. So, you can see Hall's wearing the C, Dreber, Ranton wearing the A. Dreber, of course, was our first ever draft pick, so I think it's pretty cool for him now wearing a letter. And before we get started, you guys, with the sim, I will show you the ratings for our second last season. We've got 100 offense, 96 defense, 85 goaltending. This is definitely the highest rated team we've had yet, apart from the goaltending might be a little bit lower, but we'll see uh, whether or not this team can finally get it done. And now in terms of the contracts, guys, Sam Reinhardt here is actually on the last year of his deal. If you remember, he was actually the first big freight we signed in the summer after our first season. So I'm curious to see, he's gonna be asking for about the same. I mean, we can probably wait. I feel like he shouldn't jump a ton. Shinikov here, I don't know if he'll be able to afford. Actually, Six million. We have a ton of extension dollars. Who else is expiring? Levshinov though needs a raise. Taylor Hall honestly will probably cost less. I mean, some of these younger guys, they're not getting a ton of minutes, so we should be fine. I'm actually surprised we have that many extension dollars, but I guess it makes sense because Reinhardt's 10 million. I didn't even realize we have 8.5 million cap space. Pretty crazy considering the fact I was worried about our team like getting under the cap for this season, but we really got lucky way until the end of the summer. So Chinikov here, I'm gonna assume is gonna play well for us. I could be wrong, but Let's try offering him like 575, 88 overall. I feel like that's actually a really good contract for a high end second line forward. Taylor Hall here as the captain, asking for 3.1. I'll get him locked up just under three. Rucker McGrody wants 2 million on a two year. Let's see, he'll take like 175. Porter Martone's been in the AHL, so yeah, there we go. If we want to bring him back, League Min. Hooten, same thing. He wants 1.3. I think we can honestly wait on him. Schaefer should be asking for nothing. Yeah, he's asking for 1.5. I'll offer one and a quarter. So most of those deals were actually saving money on aside from like the entry level guys. And even then, most of them were barely getting a raise. All right, so there we go. Schaefer said yes, two years, one and a half. Hall said yes, McGrody rejected as of now. Chinikov said yes, that was the big one. Actually, sorry guys, Schaefer rejected the deal. His ask has gone up to two years, two million. What the heck, just from like one regular season game? I mean, he's on the bottom pair. I think we can wait. McGrody's ask has also gone up. Luckily, we'll need him for one year. We'll do one seven five. Maybe it's because like they see they're gonna be playing in the NHL. So it kind of gets screwed that way. We'll try like 2 million rate on for Schaefer. Hopefully it actually goes up in rating. And actually guys, we haven't even played a regular season game yet. We just played our first one. So I don't really understand their ass going up like that. But Schaefer said yes, 2 years, 2 million. McGrody's still rejecting. I mean, he's playing fourth line. I don't think his price is going to get that much higher. So... I'll just wait on him. Big win we just had against Vegas, 8-2. to two. All right, guys, we're the end of summer here. The pretty solid record, 24-14-2. Unfortunately, the division's just kind of stacked this year. We're currently in a wild card spot, so fighting for our lives a bit. The Jets there are 42. Pacific division's actually much, much worse. So, yeah, tough division. Hopefully, we can at least come out into a playoff spot. AHL team there, 24-12-1. and 
don't have to really worry about them. Looking at the AHL team, Lombardi leading score. Surprising actually to see that. Just under point per game. In the NHL, it's Ranton. No surprise there. 32 and 37. So he has slowed down a little bit. Hopefully, uh, then get scoring a bit more. I am curious. Maybe we switch the lines up because um, I mentioned before, we got three snipers on that first line. I mean, in terms of the plus minus, plus five is okay. Second line is pretty low too. Maybe we can switch this up. Could do something as simple as just putting Cam on the first line. We do lose plus one Cam on the second, but just maybe, you know, having that playmaker with a couple snipers, same goes to the second line. You got a playmaker there with two snipers. Maybe it'll help the top six produce a little bit more. All right, guys, so we're now at the deadline here with a record of 34, 25, and three. Still in a wild card spot. We're five points back there of a divisional spot. In terms of Pacific, the Ducks, the next closest, nine back. In our division, though, the Blues are only two back. The Jets, there are five back. Yeah, like I said, I mean, wait a minute. The Blackhawks have 61 points. They're, t they're one point back of the Ducks for fourth in the uh, Pacific with their last place in the Central. Or I guess second last. I forgot. There's nine teams now. But that is crazy. So we got to keep fighting here, even with, you know, a pretty good record. Ranton, 53-62. and 62. We'll take it, but not his best season. Lombardi, almost a point per game. AHL team's actually first in the division now. So we got 8 million cap space. We're fighting. We definitely want to make a move here. Try and make this team even better. We only got two years left. No reason to wait around. Like, got to do something. Make use of this cap space. We might not have it next season. Now looking at who's available, you got Cam York, five years left at 10.3. Anton Lundell, one year at 9.5. Quentin Byfield, one year at five. I mean, we could take Lundell on 50% or even like 25% retention. Byfield, we could take on his whole contract. Alexander Barkov, we could also take on. Geez, so those guys would be kind of crazy to add to the forward group. Cutter Gothier is available. Aaron Eckblad's got two years left. Nylander, Evangelista, Fiala. Wow, so... I mean, I feel like definitely want to add one of these kind of top three centers. If we do this, Delandria probably just drops down to the fourth line. Now, if all of them are a rental, it looks like Barkov is the cheapest, even though they're all the same rating, 34 years old. Hopefully, saw some X factors. Barkov should be, you know, pretty good defensively as well. Yeah, he's got the yoink zone ability there, 94D awareness. So, he'll help with the PK. I think he'd be kind of a crazy player to get. I actually don't usually get Barkov. So, we don't have to retain, but they're pretty sure they'll retain here at the deadline without, you know, adding much. So we'll try 50% retention. I'm definitely going to include Hidden in this trade. He'll probably be the guy that ends up being scratched anyways. We have our first round pick this year. We'll add that. We're still going to need to add a little bit more. Could add like Meyer there as backup AHL goalie, 76 medium lead. Could also add this Kachuk guy. That'd be kind of funny. Of course, Matthew Chuck's on Florida. So Hooten in a first M Kachuk for Barca at 50%. The value looks pretty equal. Trades rejected. Okay. Even though he's on the block, they're going to want more. Honestly, guys, Matthew Schaefer here, I'm considering adding. He's minus five on the season, extended two years, two million. We have Thompson in the AHL's 80 overall, and I think, you know, would do fine in that sixth spot. This is crazy. Florida basically has their entire team on the block. Lundell, Ekblad, Barkov, Shabbat they got. Matt Benning up to an 86. Or sorry, that's Michael Benning. Okay. Alex Tuck. But I uh, got to take back, not Verhage. Um, it's the next kind of lowest valued guy. So Jacob's there with Barkov. Offering up Hooten in first and Schaefer. Trade still rejected. Jeez. Actually, guys, according to this, they don't have to retain on Barkov. So hopefully the game doesn't screw me in that regard. And then maybe, I mean, we have all these picks. We have all the thirds. Just add a Buffalo second, which had quite a bit of value. And now they're saying yes. Okay, so first, second, Schaefer, Hooten in for Alexander Barkov. It's a big time trade. But again, we're trying to win. Like we haven't won yet. I think Barkov is an awesome player. 90 overall. Could even play second line for us, honestly. I'm not sure exactly where we'll go in the lineup. Could even be our first line center. Uh, we got a lot of options now for sure. And look at this, because they're just checking the stats. Chinikov here is supposed to be a sniper. Currently has eight goals and 33 assists. Like, what the heck? His shoot pass attribute must be, like, way on the pass side. All right, guys. So now next year, we're trying to make another blockbuster trade. This one's with the St. Louis Blues. Jordan Kyrie's on the block. Two years left at $8 million. I feel like he's a very good playmaker. Again, we got a lot of snipers. Of course, he has that speed. Good shot. And I like the fact he's making $8 million next year. Sam Reinhart apparently going to command about 10 and a half. So... It's a pretty much even trade, except Kairu's younger, making $2.5 million less. If we can make this happen by adding the Kachuk prospect, I think it makes sense. Ryan has been with us for a while, but obviously we haven't won, so maybe he's the curse. I don't know, but I think, you know, making this trade for Kairu hopefully can shake things up for this team. And, and again, I really like the fact that he's locked in an extra $8 million. Let's see what the Blues say to this. Trade accepted. Okay, so... I didn't expect to trade Reinhardt come this deadline, but again, Cairo being available made too much sense. Obviously, Lundell, Byfield were there as well, but I think getting Barkov was enough centermen, so 
Hopefully those changes can help the team out. All right, guys, so the trade deadline is now over. Again, I'm still not sure how I feel about trading Reinhardt, but hopefully it works out for us. So looking at the rest of these moves getting made, JT Miller to the Devils, interesting. Samoskovic goes back to the Canucks, our trade for Kairou. Mikey Anderson to the Canucks. Johnny Goudreau on his way to Montreal with Dylan DeMello, Dylan Holloway, and uh, Braden Schneider there. Going to the Coyotes in exchange for Alexis Joseph there, another dude. Atu Ratu returns to the Islanders. Alexi Lafreniere gets traded again, this time to the Kraken. All right, Tolvin there, the Boston. Ryan Graves, the Blue Jackets. Hendricks Lapier there to the Devils. Our trade for Barca. Veronka as well to the Capitals. Adam Larson of the Jets. Miroshichenko to the Sabres. Jack Quinn of the Capitals. Also, Connor Hellebug going to the Capitals. Interesting. So, they're loading up here. Rather Sandin and going back the other way. Travis Sanheim to the Leafs. Marco Rossi to the Stars. It's a pretty active trade deadline. Thomas Bordalo to the Jets. King Korshak to the Flames. All right, Sharangovich there actually getting traded as well going to the Vegas school night. So lots of moves being made, lots of teams trying to go for it. Hopefully we're the team that comes out on top. And look at this guys, Lafreniere got traded for two second round picks. So I feel like we made up pretty good trading him for Buchnevich, then flipping Buchnevich for Chinikov. All right guys, so after the trade deadline, here's an updated look at the team. Like I said, took a risk, hopefully it pays off for us. We got Dreeber back on the first line, playing with Barkov and Ranton. Basically, it came down to who's producing the most. Ranchins are leading score. Dreamer's doing pretty well, 47 and 62. I got Chinikov on the second line there. Again, he's got to start scoring some more. Stan Coven and Kairu. And then third line here is actually Cat. He's been playing a mix of first, second line. Only has nine goals, 27 assists. Not good enough based on his ice time. Uh, Hall, though, and Hedstrom both did really well there. Delandria is now on the fourth line with Grody and Martone. I noticed too, Martone's actually got an insane shot. Five stars there. Super powerful. So, I'm going to try him on the second power play. The first one there is the same, but we have Bark out in front of the net. Second one here, Martone's Ash can be the finisher. So, again, just trying some here. See if this team can start producing a bit more. Obviously, like, they're not bad, but um, I think they are underperforming a little bit based on how good they are on paper. PK-wise, Bark of course, is a huge help. Just kind of pushes everyone else down the line. It makes the depth a lot better. I think Jack Thompson, too, being our sixth defenseman, should be fine. I actually noticed as well, Mackenzie Weger now 84, no longer has X-Factors, so... He's on the bottom pair. We no longer get the chemistry boost to have him on the second pair. We'll see, you know, how this team does. AHL-wise, I think it's basically the same. So, we got about a month and a half left. Hopefully, can win enough games, get into the playoffs, and once we do, get lucky in the sim. All right, guys, so we got one game left in the regular season, and it is way too close. Actually, I'm an idiot. I just realized we have an X next to our name. 88 points there. We got a game against the Jets. I guess even if we lose to them, they can't catch us. You can see them and the Coyotes, both of 86. The Blackhawks, 85. Like, this was so close. We've just barely got the final wildcard spot this season. And the Jets actually beat us. Definitely would have preferred to win that one, but still, we're in the playoffs there. Record 41, 35, and 6. So we just barely squeaked in. Barca was actually our leading scorer this year, 69 points. AHL team Lombardi, almost a point per game. They got first place in Division 104. I should show you guys, too. I noticed after the deadline, we weren't playing, like, the best. I figured we should have a playmaker on that top line, so... I uh, decided to throw Kairu up there, move Ranton to the left wing. Second line's now Dreber, Stan Coven, Chinikov. So, I don't know. We're just trying different things. I don't think we had a bad season at all. Like, uh, we had 88 points. You'd like to have 90 plus. But still, had a winning record there. Just had a very, very competitive division. So, hopefully, it can kind of be like a bit of a Cinderella team this season. And see, in the first round of the playoffs there, we got the Dallas Stars. Before we get started with that, guys, I'll take a look at the rest of the players. It does suck like no one at 70 plus points. Ranton putting up 67 is definitely a bit of a concern. He is 33 now, though, so I could see him slowing down, but, I mean, this is, like, his worst season since he played half a season, 2021, and then before that for a full year, I don't even know, since, like, his rookie year, we had 38 and 75, so hopefully he can bounce back in our final year, we we'll definitely need him to. Dreeber had 60, which is solid, same with Kairou, let's take a look and see with us, he had 12 and 20, again, he did start on the second line, bumped him up to the first, hopefully... He can pick it up here in the playoffs. Take a look at Barkov. He had 17 and 20, but it was a minus 9. So, like I said, that's why I want to kind of switch up that first line. It wasn't quite working. Stan Coven there, Chinikov. It is a bit concerning, too. So many minus plays there at the top. Byram at almost 50 points. I like that. Hall at 46 on the third line. Really impressive for the 38-year-old captain. Rensky 45 is not bad. Brickley Catton definitely has to do better than 44. Hedstrom 43 is rookie season playing third line. I think it's pretty respectable. Uh, the rest of these guys are like bomb six players. They're not doing too bad. Martone still only had five goals. Maybe I won't have him as the finisher on that power play, even though he does have that crazy shot. I'll choose somebody else. Goaltending here, Knight, 9-1 save percentage. I mean, he's definitely not the issue. So for once, we can kind of we have a goalie we can actually count on. Ball there looked okay in the AHL. Lombardi got captain 78. Wow, he was playing second line, pretty impressive. So that second line just popped off because Pori, I think, also was on that line. 
Lutz, Lysel, Preston, 55. I mean, what is that? Like 10 guys, 50 plus points. Even Oscar Sundqvist there. That's pretty impressive. And look at this, guys. Cole Coughlin actually got their rush trophy. He might even get the Marisha Shard, 69 goals. McKenna there. I didn't realize all Montreal now. 113 points. So he's probably a big reason why. 22 years old. Now 95. Dude just popped off. Perfect puck skills. Good shot. Yeah. What a player he became. McKinnon, Aho there. McDavid still up there. Robertson, Natchez, Pashnak, Tarnkvist. He was with the Blackhawks, now at the Vegas Golden Knights. And Caulfield does win the Marisha Shard. Five goal lead there on Pashnak. Defensive scoring, you got Evan Bouchard, 93. Luke Hughes actually beats out his brother, Quinn Hughes, but still, that Oilers top D pair is absolutely ridiculous. Goaltending, Joel Hofer, 44 wins with the Avs. Save percentage here, actually, Tristan Lennox, 922. And then goals against here is also going to go to Lennox, 266. Unfortunately for him, only 25 wins, so he probably doesn't get the Vesna. Rookie skaters here. Goreen, 54 points. Our guy was actually in the top five, 43. I mean, if we played him top six, he probably could have won the Calder. And now looking at our league here, guys, the Devils win the President's Trophy, 115 points. You had at least eight. You had nine teams there with 100 plus. Wow. So entire league, Tampa Bay, 14th. They miss. We've got 17th. So really lucky we're in the East. Calgary as well, though, squeaks save with 88 points, uh, getting the third spot in the Pacific. Last place in the NHL here. You've got the San Jose Sharks still 65. Canucks, though, um, look to be rebuilding again. Goals for the Devils are the best. Just making sure we're not at the bottom, and we aren't, because I was a little worried there. The leading score only had 70 goals. Goals against. The Blue Jackets were the best. We actually had the fifth lowest goals against in the league. So we just basically had to score more, which is kind of surprising, considering how many good forwards we have. And so like I was saying, guys, just made another change here to try to boost up the team. Berkeley Cats down the first power play, which gives them a plus five can boost. I probably should have done this before because I think power play on a plus five is huge. Also, maybe to the help can produce a bit more, especially since he's on the third line. And then power play two here, Hull's back on it since he has done so well for us playing third line. And Drew here is going to be the trigger man. Hopefully, you know, even though he's on the second power play, him being the guy to shoot the puck will help him out. So uh, in the first round here, guys, as we said before, we got the Dallas Stars. Going to be a tough matchup. As we're the eight seed here, going up against the one. They got Robertson, Hintz, and Johnson on the first line. Very nice. You got Massey there, playing with this bros dude, Zaka. I mean, they don't really have a ton of depth. Our bomb six is definitely better. Even our top six, I think, is better. Defensively, we're also better defensively. So that just shows you how much the team underperformed. We actually got to battle the brothers here, too. Jordan Kyrou versus Christian Kyrou. Goaltenders, though, they do have the better goalie in Ottinger. Although, Knights played really well for us. They got Vinny back in Ottinger up. Geez. So they just have... Honestly, too good of goalies looking like the Boston Bruins there. But we'll get started here, guys. Hopefully, somehow, it can be the Cinderella story, kind of like the Florida Panthers last year. Take out the Dallas Stars. First two games, of course, are in Dallas. 6-4 loss and a 5-1 loss. Not how you want to start. Head home to Salt Lake. 3-1 win. 2-1 OT loss. So we don't get swept. Almost, you know, tied it up there. Game 5 back in Dallas. And it's a 3-2 loss. Wow. So... This team squeaked in, unfortunately, could not take out the one seed. Take a look at the AHL. I'm definitely concerned. It looks like we actually swept the Cleveland Monsters there in the first round. We're going to have one year left, try and win the Stanley Cup. And unfortunately, the AHL team there out in the second round. These playoffs have just not been kind to us. And the playoffs are not complete, guys. The Carolina Hurricanes there actually won the Stanley Cup. I want to say that's their second Stanley Cup um, of this franchise. I'll take a look at the awards. Sharks there hold on to number one pick. Chicago jumped from 14 to 4. Jeez, I wonder if we'll see that maybe this year in the lottery. So I'll take a look here. Playoff scores. Delantria was our scoring leader. That's, <laughs> I mean, good for him, but that is not good for the team. This guy is on the fourth line, averaging less than eight minutes a night, and he led our team in playoff scoring. Like, where was everybody? Dreber, three goals. Wierenski. McGrordy was also on the fourth line. I mean, Ranton had two, Barkov two. Wow, this team needs a shakeup for sure. I don't really know what the issue is. Goaltending, Knight gave us 900 save percentage, so I can't put it on him. Playoff tree here, the Hurricanes actually swept the Penguins first round. Centers in six, Blue Jackets in five, and then they beat the Stars there in six. So we almost lost the eventual winner. Now, I don't see Hurricanes in the last five years, but I swear they got one. It's tough, though, because obviously I do so many of these. Individual awards here, Coffee got the Art Ross and the Hart. I assumed he was going to get the Hart. He also won the Marie Richard. Bouchard there, back-to-back -back James Norris trophies. Caulfield also got the Lady Bang. Huge year for him. Uh, the Go-Ring guy there got the Calder. Nature's Con Smite. You got Dago in the Vezina there with the St. Louis Blues. Aiden Hill got the William Jennings, the Blue Jackets. Fritz there, Bill Masterton. Wild Coach Jack Adams. Nico Hischier, back-to-back -back Selkies, even though on the worst team in the league. Cole Caulfield, of course, Ted Lindsay, and the Race Richard. So take a look at the AHL awards next. I do think we might have won the regular season. Actually, no, we won our division, but that was it. Individual awards here, just taking a look to see if we got any. 
but I don't think so. Lennon there was the best goalie. Definitely had to shake this team up this summer. I thought, you know, shaking him up at the deadline might give us a boost. I think we stayed the same, if not maybe even played a little bit worse. So we'll see what's available in free agency. I don't think I'll be bringing Barkov back. Maybe can flip him for at least, you know, a couple picks at the draft. And our retired players here, guys, you got Patty Kane calling it a career. Same with Taylor Hall. Definitely feel like I let him down. He retires, never winning the Stanley Cup. Did really well with us. Of course, you know, just never got lucky. So he's the captain. Maybe we can uh, win it next year in our final year in his honor. Jeff Skinner there retired. Jonathan Huber Doe to Foley. I mean, some pretty big names, but um, outside of Patrick Kane there, no one really crazy. He was down to 76 at the Bruins. Goaltending wise, you got Mrazek, Bennington, Brassois, Alex Lyon there as well. And throughout the draft now, guys, the Buffalo Sabres there, the third overall pick on the block. Surprise Chicago's now, they're picking the block, jumping from 14 to 4. Top 5 there is just a standard medium elite. Taking a look, wow, <laughs> so many gems. Uh, we got a guaranteed medium elite Polish goalie. Gonna go like 4th round, this Cheka as well as like 231. Low top 6, 69 is not really anything crazy. Gems just keep coming. We got a guaranteed or probably medium elite early second round. Maybe you can make a trade. Wow, how? <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen this many gems. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Let me know if you've ever seen 11 gems in a draft class. That's crazy. And these two guys here, probably a little elite's going to go late in the draft. Definitely try and scoop them up. All right, guys. So now next year I'm trying to trade the Columbus Blue Jackets. Get an early second rounder, offering up two-thirds, medium seventh D prospect, medium top six D prospect, and a fifth. They say yes. Okay, so uh, a bunch of stuff we didn't really need. I'll just send to that pick. Hopefully that guy who's supposed to be medium elite is still available. Take a look too at the top of the draft. You got a 82 medium elite, 84 to the Canucks. Nice pick. Blackhawks there, 79. They messed up. 83 medium elite. We're going to the Kraken. Just kind of curious. Any steals, but it does not look to be any. So hopefully we can get lucky with the guy I got pinned there. Clayton Barch. Let's see. No weaknesses. NHL FCA is guaranteed four years, but I'm looking for a guy who's mainly potential. And he's medium top six. Okay, so our scouts, I mean, I guess there's gonna be a lot of gems when uh, they're making you think the prospects are a lot better than they actually are. And that's kind of crazy, guys. As I mentioned, I don't think I'm gonna bring Barkov back. Just didn't really do good enough, I think, on the first line. Minus four. Obviously, amazing defensively. 97D awareness. I just, I don't know, 34. I think I want to use that money elsewhere in free agency. And we can get a second round pick here from the Hurricanes. Let them play with all those fans on Carolina. They reject the trade. Doesn't fit our team needs. Let's see if there's another team that would uh, be willing to do this. All right, so asking for a second round pick from the Penguins. Chisholm's just there for the roster spot. And they say yes. So we're going to have some money to spend for agency. Hopefully there's some good players there again. I just, I didn't like how the team played with Barkov. So uh, we're getting rid of him. Kairou, you know, still locked up. 8 million, I think we'll be fine with. And you know what I just realized, guys? I think I totally missed it, but Mackenzie Weger retired. It kind of makes sense. Like he was 35 now, I think. So very early retirement, but... He dropped in rating. He wouldn't have been a big point producer, so I didn't notice him um, on the list. I forgot to check our team, but yeah, Mackenzie Beager's gone. I was actually thinking about maybe trading him for like, you know, a second round pick, but that means we save his six and a half million in cap space. So yeah, this last summer, we're definitely gonna be buyers, which, you know, should be fun. Hopefully I uh, can find guys to make this team a Stanley Cup champion. And look at our pins here, guys, and they're all late picks. So honestly, we have a third here. I'm just gonna trade it away. All right, guys, I'm offering Montreal third and a fourth for a fifth and two sevenths. Seems like, yeah, pretty no-brainer trade for them. Again, our scouts find a bunch of guys that are gonna go late, which seems to be the kind of the case. So I don't mind just, you know, having extra picks. We're at 118 now. I think the next guy to go is gonna be this, you know, guaranteed mean league goalie. Schultz from Poland, 57 overall. Not the highest rated, but definitely take that. Now in the fifth round here, I think the next guy to go is this Gruel guy who's supposed to be low elite. And he is, 62 overall defenseman. Very good pick in the fifth round. End of the fifth round here, I think the next guy to go is Cons, who could be a medium top six. Let's take a look. And he's medium top nine. All right, so kind of missed on that. We got an early sixth round pick now. I think we're going to go with, I guess, McGinn. He's actually going to go quite soon. Angel HGA is guaranteed five years. Halvardson, also five. So... I'll take him. Please be medium top six. He's also medium top nine. And next year, guys, offering Vegas two sevenths for a sixth, just to make sure we can get that other guy who's probably medium top nine uh, based on, you know, our last two picks there. But taking a chance on Halvardson, he's also medium top nine. Jeez. So I think I can't believe that. Like, the odds were they're going to be medium top six. Unfortunately, we just got unlucky. Next guy here to go will be Ragnarsson, low elite from Sweden. Has a very cool Viking name. He is a low elite there, 57 overall. And then our last pick in the draft here, I believe, Philip Bullis guy, guaranteed low elite grinder, gem, 49 overall, but still like, you know, late seventh round pick, 
that's great value. And so right there, you guys can see a bunch of names that are probably going to be used in trades this summer and next season. That's about it. But uh, still, you know, guys, it'll help the team hopefully win a Stanley Cup. So we'll get to the re-sign phase here, guys. Looking at it here, guys, we have almost $19 million in cap space. Ranton's dropped to a 92, which sucks. But still, I mean, should be able to, you know, put up 100 points with that rating. Byram, I think, is actually up by one to a 91. So him and Rensky is a sick top pair. I think they both had, like, really good plus minus last season. Actually, Rensky only had a plus five. Byram at a plus 12. I think it was higher before the deadline. So yeah, maybe the trades I made did not work out. But obviously that's sometimes going to happen. Looks like Katten dropped him rating by a couple. Chinikov by one. Hedstrom's up one. Galandric kept his rating. McGrory here, let's see. He's asking for 1.6. So actually, yeah, he did come down. He was asking for like 2 million bucks start of the year. And now Oscar Sunkvist here played really well in the AHL. Wants league minimum. I don't mind that at all. Uh, could just go back in the AHL and maybe be a fourth liner for us. Lysel's 27 now. Kind of did Matt on the first line. Lombardi was our leading scorer. So... Um, even though he's 27, I'll bring him back. And looking at our defense, guys, obviously top four set there by Rwenski. And then we got Glavov, Levshinov. Need someone on the bottom pair, though, with Jack Thompson. So Levshinov wants 6.8 for four years. I think I'm honestly going to wait again, try and just get him cheap on a one year. That we have some money here for free agency. And in terms of the goaltenders, that's also set. Now, we do have so much depth. We could potentially use one in the trade. We also just got Schultz, medium elite who will also be good in the trade. All right, guys, one of the AHL players said yes. Sunkfist rejected. Could give him a little bit more. Rucker McGrody, they have rejected. He also wants to get paid. Honestly, I'll just offer McGrody what he's asking for. Sunkfist, I, I did offer what he's asking, but I guess I'll offer extra. And so there we go. He said yes. Same with McGrody. So potentially, you know, two-thirds of the fourth line there. Again, we got like 18 million in calf space. Really, I'm just looking for a game changer. Somebody to play on that first line with Rantanen. Uh, you know, help us win a Stanley Cup. All right, guys, so moment of truth, right in free agency. Hopefully, oh my goodness, Luke Hughes, is he available? I think he is. No, he's an RFA, but still, there's two teams interested. Someone's looking to make an offer sheet. Lecker Mackey there. You got Cutter Gothe, of course, was available at the deadline. Dylan Cousins, 90 overall, wants 9.5. Pretty reasonable. I mean, Quentin Byfield there wants 9.25. Gothe wants a lot of money, probably because he's 26, but way more than everybody else. JJ Paterka. I mean, wow, we could get some pretty crazy players here. In terms of defense, we'll have to take a look, but um, definitely a lot of guys here that are piquing my interest. In terms of goaltenders, I would just check a curiosity. Bonger's the best available. You also got Saros there. Take a look and see if we could steal a medium elite. We cannot, but Jovanovski, 2070, low elite. Uh, we can get this guy for free. Definitely want to do that. And he was actually a Detroit Red Wings fifth round pick, 2027. Don't really stand not signing him. He was here also is pretty good, 2057 medium starter. He was a guy that didn't get drafted. And so we're looking at defensemen now, guys. I just realized Luke Hughes is asking for 16.4. That is just crazy. So uh, Nikishin here, 87 overall offensive. I feel like we have Byram, we have Varensky. I mean, hopefully like Byram can put up a bit more points than he has been. Samuelson here, 85 overall defensively, four and a half stars. I mean, five star physical looks to be a very solid. You also got Fairberry here, defensive defenseman. Just, but I think it'd just be really solid on that bottom pair. Probably play top four PK. I feel like Samuelson's a guy I don't often have, or Fairberry I have had on the team before. So let's offer... That is kind of a lot of money for a bottom pairing guy. Maybe there's a better deal if we go lower. Like this here. Now we could bring Thomas Harley back on the team. 83 overall, 3.4 million. Maybe that's the way to go. Polak 2.2. Thing is, he's 35, so he might honestly drop in rating. Dante Fabro, 82 overall, a million bucks. Okay, even though he's also right-handed, that is the deal to do. Bottom pairing guy, I'll offer like 1.1. We're not able to beat that. And so in terms of forwards, guys, we basically have 18 million here to try and bring in two sick players. Like, we could literally get both Cousins and Byfield to be pretty crazy. Couple power forwards there, couple centermen. Surprised me that they're actually cheaper than lower-rated guys like Chibrikov, Evangelista. I don't, like, quite understand that one. Capo Caco. Six and a half million for 88. 96 D awareness. Oh my goodness. Last year he had 58 points. It looks like he's playing third line. And so looking at Byfield here, he had 55 points last season. Cousins had a lot more than that. He had like 72. They're both playing first line. So I'm thinking I'm eyeing Cousins. He's also got the zone ability there. Truculence, but still very good. Just all around player. He wants five years till he's 34. We'll offer him. I mean, we have money. Saw from 10-5 there. Basically he's your replacement for Barkov. And then rather than going for Byfield, I'm actually looking at Kako. And his role is actually a third line scoring forward, so I think this gives him more options if he'll, you know, play fine third line. Really good defensively. I'll offer him 7 million bucks for three years. Hopefully, you know, both those guys say yes. Hopefully those are actually difference makers for this team. And now looking at two-way skaters here, guys. Cam Lund, 26-82. Uh, might as well try and get him for free. We actually do need a few AHL forwards just due to guys graduating. This guy's not bad at all. 
Anthony Duclair could bring in. I'd actually rather bring in Gavin Brindley, though. He'd probably be sick in the AHL. Could also get Samuel Honzik here, former first round pick by the Flames. So, uh, yeah, I'll sign those three guys and maybe the AHL team could try to win one more Calder Cup. And then defensively here, I think we actually need a couple players as well. All these guys are like done growing, although it doesn't really matter with one year left. Ryan Healy, though, 26 99, looks pretty solid. Now, this Ufco guy, 93 offense awareness, 90 passing. Could be the guy to uh, run our power play. So I'll give him a one year league min. See what everyone says. Again, you know, hopefully Cousins says yes. Hopefully as well, you know, him and Kako fit on the team. I saw uh, Cousins, I think, fit on like the third line. Kako, it was like unsure. So definitely a little bit of a risk. Favreau said yes. I think him on the bottom pair will be good. Jovanovski, we got that goalie. So definitely have lots of goalies to trade. Hanzik there, Gavin Brindley, Healy's AHL team's looking good. Ufko, Cam Lund. There we go, guys. Dylan Cousins does say yes, joining the team. Kapokako as well. So a couple of big names that are getting in free agency in the final summer. Take a look. We still have 2.3 million in cap space. You can see if there's just anyone only asking for that much. Uh, does not look like it. And I just started forward by their defensive stat. There's this Ludkey guy available, 25-79, undrafted by the Arizona Coyotes. Really good defensive stats and physical is pretty solid too. There's like a chance he could be a fourth liner for us. If not, I think it just helps with the HL team. Now we are at 49-50 contracts, so might have to trade away a couple guys here. All right, guys, now next time I'm trying to make another big time trade. I was just going to dump some players on the San Jose's roster, but then I saw they have Will Smith on the team who's got medium franchise potential now, and his value doesn't really reflect that. 25-87, making 4.5 for two more years. We've got Berkeley Cat, who's kind of been underperforming for us, making the exact same amount of money. Nine goals, 35 assists, playing them like, you know, in the top line. Decent defensively, face offs really good enough to play center. I'm thinking I'm going to trade the guys over I was originally going to. Basically, they're all kind of guys with good potential who, who didn't quite pan out. You can see like Bondra, 23, only a 69. Kerbin, 22, 66, low elite. Plus a second round pick. Value's on our side. Let's we'll see what the Sharks say. Trades rejected. Okay, so I mean, honestly, I'm willing to just try something here. I'll give a first round pick. Same rating, but maybe Smith will actually grow this summer. And they still said no. So I tried it. Maybe it wasn't meant to be. But if we could get back a third round pick here, that'd be super solid. And they say yes. Wow, okay. Now, this is interesting, guys. Look at the other teams. It's Sam Reinhardt's on the block for St. Louis Blues. And as you can see there, he's down to 86 overall. But he signed a really good contract, 4.2 for two. Obviously, I traded him away because I was worried he was going to ask for $10 million. We're actually paying Kairu $4 million more. But Kairu is higher rated. What I was thinking is, I saw a lot of people uh, when I made that one trade a couple seasons ago. Lafreniere for Bucinavich. They didn't like it. Maybe we bring Lafreniere back on the team. We do kind of need that playmaker put him, you know, second, even first line. I'm thinking we could offer up Berkeley Cat, and he's got more value. There's this medium leak guy on the, there's, now there's this medium leak guy on the block right below him. I doubt they would do both these guys for Catton. Yeah, trades rejected. I figured I would try though. This guy here is actually not too bad. Kuhlman, 2178 power forward. If he grows, could potentially be a fourth liner. Let's see if the crack would do him and Lafreniere for Berkeley Catton. Trade is still rejected. There's no way I do this one for one, but I do think maybe we should bring Lafreniere back on the team. Second round pick. They said the second round pick was too much. Lafreniere in a third for Berkeley Catton. Just a bit low. They said no to a fourth as well. The fifth goes through. So honestly, we probably lost that trade in terms of pure value. But like, got a ton of picks to work with. Ton of prospects. Trying to do right by you guys. Hopefully all these changes. Uh, I'm trying everything as you can see. Hopefully it all works out. I just realized too, we only have 900k here to sign Levshinov. I kind of forgot he didn't have a contract. So... I gotta figure that one out as well. And I was just so scared for a second, guys. I just got an off sheet compensation screen. Luckily, it's not Levshinov. It's one of our AHL guys, Hillman. So, um, I mean, we can lose them. It's one of those things, again, where really you could, you know, match the offer of 1.2 million, but technically you don't have enough money because it's not the fall. So we lose them, but we brought in, I think, some better AHL players. Again, I'm just hoping by the end of August, Levshinov still hasn't, you know, got an offer sheet and we can get him dirt cheap. All right, guys, around the fall, and Lotion here is asking for 2.8 for one year. We got lucky. I'm going to offer him 2.6. That's actually the max we can offer. Really, you know, you should be able to offer 3.6 because uh, they're taking over for a million dollar player, but it is fine. Hopefully he says yes to that. And there we go. He did say yes. So we got super lucky there. All right, guys. So after getting Lotion under contract, we're finally set for next year. Hopefully in the final year, we can get lucky. Uh, we definitely, I feel, have a team. We just 
you know, has to do with whether or not they perform. So let me know if you guys think I should change the lineups at all. I'm definitely, you know, willing to hear your feedback. Right now, I've got Dreber, Cousins, and Ranton on the first line. Uh, mainly because they get a plus five. Also, Ranton and Dreber are the only two forwards whose role there is first line. Second line, you got Chinikov, Stan Coven, and Kairu. On the third, you got Kako, Hedstrom, Lafreniere. I just realized too, we reunited Lafreniere and Kako, which I think is kind of cool. Like, I could put, you know, Lafreniere here. Chinikov's a sniper, but he doesn't really shoot that puck, so it's weird. Fourth line's really solid. McGrody, Lund, Delandria. Lund actually beat out Porter Martone. Simply due to the fact, I think Martone didn't really do the greatest last season, so just trying him out. Defensively, I'm also trying something new. Byram, Glebov's the top pair. We then have Levshin, Alvarensky on the second. So this way, kind of the entire top four is really good. And then the bottom pair there, you got Fabro and Thompson. We still have Knight starting. Balder's now an 85 backup, so... Uh, we definitely have an awesome goalie tandem, AHL-wise, Saren is 83 still, Meyer there's an 81 now, he was the medium elite guy, uh, you look at the AHL team, you got Preston, Martone on the first line, Gavin Brindley with Lombardi, Hanzik, uh, the bomb six is still solid defensively, this Bowman dude looks really good, 90D awareness, uh, probably make the NHL team next year, could even call him up this season, obviously skating and hands are terrible though, it's an option, Ufko there, he's like the more offensive guy, so like this AHL team I think definitely could win a Calder Cup again if they get lucky. So like I said guys, let me know in the comments section any, any change you think I should make to the line. Also too with Lafreniere returning, I figured I'd give him an A since I think he got traded away before he ever got to wear a letter for our team. Obviously there was a chance he could be our future captain. But I ended up giving it to Dreber because again, you know, first ever pick for this team. He's been here the entire way. Hasn't really, you know, been a stud necessarily, but still the longest tenured player on the team. So we'll keep him. Now, in um, terms of the ratings here, guys, for the final year, we've got 100 offense, 94 defense, 89 goaltending. I think I was saying in the beginning of this episode how we had the most balanced team yet without not including goaltending. This time, including goaltending, this is the most balanced team we've had. So hopefully the final year is our year. If you guys enjoyed this episode, leave that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the sub button down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.